Good morning, I'm Stephen Cook with Cook's Hall Manufacturing. It's a good hot morning in South Alabama. We've got a tropical storm headed up our way. There's nothing really new under the sun when you, when you talk about the climate. It's hot, it's always been hot in August here. And uh, so don't let people fool you with that climate change stuff. It's always hot and I've seen it hotter when I was a young man, so. But anyway, we want to share some videos with you. We're uh, going, going through some things and re-updating, wanting to uh, talk to maybe new customers, new people that are out there looking to want to saw wood. I've come across some things in my thought processes in the last few months and years even. It's always good to have a project or a plan or a goal. All these things kind of go together in life and it gives us uh, more joy, more happiness in life. We've, we've learned a couple things that we like to do one, and one of the biggest one is sawing lumber and others digging in the dirt. We think that's kind of universal with all people. So we want to share with you some things about sawmills, about cutting lumber uh, and, and if, you, if you want to saw lumber, if you like building things and, and making furniture, then, then sawing lumber is, is just fits right into that, into that, uh, that whole plan, that whole project scenario. So I want to show you some things about a sawmill and if you just learn a handful of things and you have a sawmill you can saw good lumber and that's what we want to share with you. Today I want to show you about the blade alignment tool that I have right here and I'll, I'll demonstrate that to you here in just a little bit but we're going to be wanting to show different things that you might be interested in. If you have some comments that you things you'd like to see, if you'll write them in, we'll try to address those. In some of the upcoming videos, we'll continue with some of the basics of how to set up sawmill, and this would apply to most any sawmill. I'll try to mention when there's some variations or whatever from time to time, like different types of guides, sandwich guide versus roller guides, things of that nature. But these should help you. And the good thing, uh, it's hard to know what to trust and believe in this life anymore. Uh, so many things are going on in the world of politics and, and uh, just, just all over. It, it's hard to know what to trust and, and who to trust and how to do. That's, that's a fact of life. But a couple of, couple of things I can tell you is, one, Jesus loves you. I want to tell you that. Jesus loves me. I have to remember. That, uh, there's a, that our God loves us and cares about us. And so I always like to remember that. That helps me get along in life. And then the other thing is, if you want to saw with, saw with the sawmill, there's just a few things to remember. And we can show it to you, we can teach you, and if you'll give us a try, we want to work with you. And uh, would like for you to work with us. And we can, we can help you out with things that you might enjoy doing, things you'd like to do. Uh, with sawmills. Okay, so in this video I do want to show what we call our blade alignment tool. Sometimes we call it a blade leveling tool and that's really the wrong words and, and I'll show you why because I'm going to use a straight edge here which is actually a level but I don't want you to confuse that and I think people do that. We're not using that bubble on the level to do this. Number one is if your sawmill is not level to begin with and then you try to level the blade you're, you're, you're messing everything up. But I'm using the straight edge here and I'm aligning my band blade uh, with the deck. That's what this is all about and I'll move this under here. And so with the blade alignment tool, it goes over the blade, and this, this piece of stock goes right in there, and you just snug it up, okay? I'm doing this finger tight, just snug that up. So what that's doing is just exaggerating the, the width of the blade. Instead of this being an inch and a quarter blade, now we've got about a 16 inch. So now when we measure, again, I'm not gonna look at that bubble, when we measure, from the top to the bottom, or, or from, I'm sorry, from the bottom of this, or you could do the top, but down to this, this straight edge, then I can determine with my adjustments that I have that I can tilt this up or down and get it parallel with the bed. Sometimes we say level, and that's just not the right word. So I just want to caution you in that so you don't get confused about it. So we use uh, blade, uh, uh, roller guides on our sawmills. We've been using them for years and years. We've, we've dealt with the sandwich guides and the roller guides and we've uh, had a lot of people convert over to the roller guides. We think they're a little more forgiving to the blade. Sometimes if you're sawing at high speeds, people like to clamp that, especially in resaw situations. When I say clamp, they're not totally clamping, but they're getting very close and really forcing through the cut. 
Well, we want to go fast, but, but sometimes you, you, you keep a balance on all that. We want as much blade life as we can get as well. So we go with the roller guides here. So I'm going to I'm going to move the wheel here. That that belt on this one is a little bit tight. So we'll start at one side. So I will start on the incoming side of where this blade we're sawing in this direction. My sawdust will come out over here, and that's not overly critical, but that's just something I like to do. So on our mill and and on all mills, it's just very important that you have adjustments to, to be able to get this blade aligned. I mean, obviously you can see that. If I tilt that blade up like that and you try to saw like that, you know that just won't saw. Conversely, and we'll be talking about this in, in, in future videos, uh, if it's tilted like that, it's, it's going to saw down. You just can't hold it out. Uh, we will talk about blade set upside downside we're going to make some blades and actually do some sawing so subscribing uh, and we'll send these uh, videos to you or, or notice of these videos and you can go watch them when that comes up i think you'll find them find them interesting and uh, some of the experimentation that we're, we're going to do i think will just be very novel and neat and and uh, will be very applicable to your situation again don't don't get overwhelmed by the thinking of this is very very simple and straightforward we want this blade to be aligned with with the bed right here and so parallel <clears throat> that's all i'm doing with this straight edge is keeping it parallel so the first thing that we do is we have adjustment on this this roller guide right here and uh, I, you'll, you'll see I can, I can actually make this roller come up and, and I am off of that blade now. So we, we want to have at least an eighth of an inch down pressure. I had a man one time, an Amish man actually, who, who ran the least amount of uh, down pressure that he could run. I think he was just barely touching it and he had everything adjusted perfectly and he got a lot of life out of his blade. We like to make sure you have down pressure, so we usually say a quarter of an inch thereabouts down pressure. So once I touch the blade, this one will be off. We'll push that down, and that lets me know that I can control this blade now with the pressure that I have down. If you don't have adjustable down or up or the ability to do that, then you might consider buying some roller guides from us, and you have to do some welding. This is a weld-on situation. Uh, but we have little instructions on how to do that, and you'll find that will increase and, and help your sawing quite a bit. So once I've got some down pressure here, we have the ability in the back, I'll, I'll point at this one though I'm working over here, there's a, a stem that comes off the back of this roller guide setup, and it comes into here, and this is actually holding that stem and holding this whole roller guide setup. So what we want to do with it, is we have a jam nut and uh, and then we have a 3 8 or, or the square head 3 8 here so we can adjust this and if I screw down on this then I will tilt this blade up if I screw up from the bottom I have to loosen the top a little and screw up from the bottom I can tilt that blade down but what I'm after is going really flat now I'll, I'll give you a little tip on that as well once you um, have that thing flat if you're sawing and it's still wanting to rise a little bit it could be a lot of things there's a there's a thing that we can check and we can work on and help you about flatness in a blade that's an interesting thing and we can help you specifically with your mill if you're using a lot of uh, blades in a month resawing or uh, running whatever and you're you're in a high production then sometimes it helps and, and sometimes we have a little additional charge but we can do some things with the body of this blade that will make you be able to saw just tremendously better but if you just got a blade and it's wanting to rise and you go I checked that thing and it's it's level or it's a <laughs> I use that word again it's it's aligned properly it's flat with the with the deck but it wanting to rise wanting to rise wanting to rise We'll just push up from the bottom with this screw on the bottom down here. Loosen this and screw up on the bottom and it'll tilt that down. So I'm exaggerating like this, but we just want to tilt it down a sixteenth. See if that helps you out. Then you might go even an eighth. Now, this is not something I want to do on every blade. That shouldn't be what you're doing. So don't, don't waste your day doing that. We want to saw lumber. We want to build barns and houses and furniture and make this lumber. Smell that sawdust in the air. But 
occasionally, or if you're in a tight needing to finish, sometimes you can do a little adjustment here and that will uh, m allow you to be able to, to get on through that cut. So once I do that there, then I'll bring it over and do the same thing. I'll get right up, right up beside it there. This is just snug. I would bring this over here, <clears throat> close as I can right in there. And, and I wanna do the same thing. I can adjust this up or down. Once I have this one right, then I'll bring the down pressure down on here and then tilt and adjust my tilt. One other thing then, once I have, have all that right, I want to, <clears throat> to check and make sure that as I come into this cut, that my roller guides are not, uh, let's see if I can, how would be a good way to show you. The flange of this roller guide right here, I don't want it cocked in and gouging into that wheel. I don't know if we can pick that up real well or not. I don't want it gouging into that wheel. If this, this flange, you see this flange right here, right, right there, if I'm exaggerating it again with this, I don't want it cocked way into to right here. I want it to be lightly touching on this side. So just flat to touching lightly over here. Because if I'm gouging into my blade over here, there'll be some burr or something on the incoming side of that flange. That, and we have a chamfer there so that, so that you don't gouge into it. But there can be something there. And, and by rubbing hard right there, um, it, it can damage your blade and, and shorten the life of your blade. So if I have it open a little bit, tilt it back a little bit that way so that as the blade comes in, it's just barely touching. Here are totally flat. Then we want that to spin. The other thing <clears throat> is we start, we want this blade when we're not running, we'll put this on and we'll just spin the blade. When we're not running, I want the back of my blade to be at the first guide. I'm trying to figure the best way to show that to you. So, so here's the flange and there's the first um, slot before the first ridge of this roller guide. So I want it right there on this first ridge really. So about an eighth of an inch would be a way to see that. So I don't want, even want it touching that flange to begin with. So what happens is when you advance into the cut and the harder you push the more it will do this. Uh, it will push back. Watch this. I can I don't want to cut my hand, but I can push that back. I can move that some right now. So you see that blade will give a little. Well, when you hit the cut, <clears throat> without getting into a big explanation, that's why we have spring-loaded tension. There's a minute, we're talking thousands, but there is a little stretch in that blade. And that's, uh, that, that blade will move back and touch that flange that holds it on the wheel and then it saws forward in it. And that's why it's important to have all those adjustments I were talking about how it comes in. But when you come out of the cut, <clears throat> it will actually track back forward just a little bit and come off that flange. So we're not rubbing the back of this blade. Uh, this blade is made of spring steel. I mean, it's got, has carbon in it. Steel, to get spring in steel and not bend and kink, you have, to, you have to have carbon, and that's how you get spring steel. So this is a high carbon blade, but you also heat that and temper it. You make that thing hard and break like glass. And so that's why we don't want to be rubbing the back and, and creating a lot of friction. friction. If you ever have a blade and you've got numerous cracks in the back, there's a good chance could be rubbing the back of that too much. Now don't, don't stay awake at night thinking about all of that. Uh, just adjust it out and run. You shouldn't see that a lot. But if you see it one day and you go, oh, I got a bunch of cracks in the back of my blade, my blade's breaking, check and make sure. Sometime a, you can be rubbing against a bolt or something in there and you'll go, wow, I never believe that could have happened. But um, we just don't want to create friction on the back of this. And we have these blades tempered and uh, we do some treating on them ourselves in, in one of our companies and we can do whatever you need. We want to help you. So uh, when you approach us, if you'll just let us know what's going on, we try to do the right thing. That is our, our principles we try to live by. We're Christians, we try to live by those principles. And so buy your blades from us, give us a try. <clears throat> if, if there's an issue, this is not a perfect world I have learned. <laughs> so I'm sure every, every one of you have as well. Basically, we have not found anything when you're dealing with bandsaw blades and uh, especially the thin kerf narrow blades from one inch to two inch, three inch, 
even wider. We have an understanding that's come all the way from our childhood forward. Our daddy taught us he was a hammer man, and we have some understanding about tension and flatness and uh, set and sharpness of that tooth. And we'll be talking about those in further videos. So uh, thank you for looking. Thank you for, for using us, uh, allowing us to work with you. Thank you for uh, all your patience through the years. We've really been blessed. We are selling a lot of sawmills and uh, our blade sales are doing well and we need to, we just like to, to encourage you as you go along life's way and I help you out. If, you're, if you enjoy sawing lumber and smelling that sawdust, it reminds me of my granddaddy's home. It reminds me of when I was a boy. Uh, it's just an enjoyable thing. So we want to help you in that and encourage you as, as you work through this life.